Good morning. Welcome to Santa Rosa County Board of County Commissioners meeting. Uh, it's Thursday, October the 23rd. Uh, if you would please, before we start, take a moment and make sure your cell phones are on vibrate. If you would. Uh, this morning, uh, Pastor Mike Wiggins, Pine uh, Terrace Baptist Church, is going to uh, lead us in the invocation, and then uh, Commissioner Williamson in the pledge, please. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another wonderful day that you've given to us. And Father, we acknowledge the fact that every day, Lord, that we have is a gift from you. And God, we pray that we would be faithful in using it to honor you and to serve you. We thank you for the opportunity to live in this wonderful county. Father, we pray that you will help us to be diligent and guarding the, the way of life that you have allowed us to have here. Father, we also are reminded this morning that we need to come before you as your servant David did, Lord, when he asked you to search his heart and look into his life and see if there was any unclean way in his life. God, we pray that you would help us to do that in our lives and humbly bow ourselves before, bow ourselves before you and receive your forgiveness. We thank you for these people, Lord, these uh, wonderful folks who serve you, who give of their lives to do this, and we ask, dear Lord, that you would give them wisdom and understanding as they listen to the issues that are brought before them and that they would make uh, good decisions that honor you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, approval of the meeting, uh, approval of the minutes of the September 30th, 2014 Judicial Facility Town Hall meeting. They're in backup. I recommend approval without objection. Hearing none, they are approved. We'll move now to approval of the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no additions today. Commissioner Salter. No additions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, sir. I'm going to add uh, Mr. Greg Brown to the uh, presentations. Mr. Brown has a uh, presentation to make. So if you'd note that, please. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one item I would like to add to it, uh, to our economic development. It's just an information item about the uh, UWF IFAS Center this Friday night. Commissioner Lynchard. No changes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, I would note that item six on the um, Administrative Committee is the resolution regarding the ECUA, and, and actually that's just for information. The, the action will be taken tonight at the rezoning meeting. I just want to carry it forward on the agenda. There will be on, no action today. And then number five is the suspension of the Navarre Beach uh, lease fee credit policy pending the, the, the board coming up with, with potential alternatives based on the Attorney General. Okay. Opinion. And, those, and that's number five. Right. And so those are already there. Okay. Those are posted uh, to the agenda now. So, Ms. Andrews, no Ms. Playoff, Ms. Bell, nobody down there? Okay. Uh, we have two public hearings scheduled. We have one at 930, which is a submittal of an application for the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant for improvements to Navarre Park at uh, 1815 Navarre Parkway. We'll hear that one as close to 930 as we can. And at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll hear uh, a submittal of application for Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grants for improvements to Vinnie Russell Park, located at 5417 West Benchfield Road. Uh, and we'll move on into the Economic uh, Development Committee. Commissioner Salter. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did I skip my recognition? I sure did. But you guys got to keep me straight. We have two 
uh, we have a large group of recognitions this morning. Uh, the first group that we're going to recognize en masse are uh, folks that have served the county in a voluntary uh, situation on advisory boards, uh, some of them for several years. We have uh, Mr. Frank Harold, uh, Larry Hall, Steve Salter, and J.R. Williamson, our very own. Uh, and if we can get you guys down here, we'll uh, not read all four of them because they're, they're basically the same, but just changing the name of the committee you served on. And if you would please uh, join us down there. We can't say enough about the folks that volunteer for these types of things because that's a real tax saving situation there. These men and women voluntarily give us their time and expertise and uh, if we had to pay for it that would be an expensive item. Next we have, uh, after the recognitions, we have a proclamation for Veterans Day. in Santa Rosa County proclamation. Whereas brave men and women have served our country in an exemplary manner in all parts of the world since this country's inception, and whereas all citizens of the United States have benefited from the sacrifices made by the veterans in defending this country, and whereas our, county, our country's veterans continue to serve our country and cause of freedom by exemplifying the patriotism of love of country that has become the fabric of our society, and whereas it is right to remember, recognize, and honor current and past service to our country by all veterans, <clears throat> now be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Santa Rosa County that Tuesday, November the 11th, 2014, is proclaimed Veterans Day. And the Board encourages all citizens to honor those who have served and who continue to serve the country preserve the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy by participating in ceremonies honoring our veterans, passed and adopted by the Board of County Commissioners this 23rd day of October uh, 2014, signed by me as chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Commissioner. <clears throat> as always, we'll represent these on Veterans Day service, the one at uh, the Veterans Memorial Park and one down in Navarre. Also, I would like to remind everyone that uh, the Veterans Day Parade in Milton starts at 9.30 up at Milton High School. We'll end up down at the Veterans Memorial Park, and our service will start at 11 o'clock. So I encourage everyone to come out, especially what's going on in the world today, especially what happened in Canada yesterday. We're going to have to depend more and more on our military, and they will become our veterans. So thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner Salter. All right, we have two presentations this morning. Uh, uh, first is uh, 
Honorable Stan Nichols, tax collector, followed by the Honorable Greg Brown, uh, property appraiser. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I uh, appreciate you all uh, letting me come down and say hello to you this morning. Um, as I've said in years past, this is one of my favorite days of the year. For clarification's sake, you all know that whenever we perform a transaction, we get a small fee. And we get 2% from every tax transaction that we process. We may get $2.5 for a tag and $6 for renewing a driver license. And, and so this is the money we use to pay our salaries in the tax collector's office and, and uh, uh, handle all of our expenditures. And at the end of our fiscal year, we take the money, the, the unspent revenue, and we return that back to the taxing authorities. And this morning, I'm pleased to be able to return back to the taxing authorities $483,047. Um, of that, um, Northwest Florida Water Management gets about $833, and the different fire districts get a few thousand dollars apiece, and then the remaining $471,803 is returned to the Santa Rosa County Board of County Commissioners. So it's my pleasure this morning to um, give, uh, give you that report and a check for $471,000, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. We look forward to this every year. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, uh, Stance a little late giving money back, but I'm not going to talk about tax collector doing a late payment. I gave mine back yesterday. <laughs> so uh, yesterday I gave back, uh, this is the give and ask uh, portion that I do every year. Is, uh, I gave uh, $251,000 back to the commission return that we uh, uh, efficiently spent uh, taxpayer money that we did not use all of it and gave back. But... Uh, as Commissioner Salter and I talk about every year, is the, the state reduced the amount of taxes to the taxpayers, but they passed it down to the county commission. And in the um, aspect of just the mapping, they wrote a statute that says, my office must pay for the mapping. And so to fly the county is about a quarter of a million dollars to fly the county uh, about every three years or less. And so... This is where I give back, but then I ask for uh, about $91,500 to pay the mapping off that the state so graciously passed down to my office and didn't give me any funding to do that. So I gave back $251,000 yesterday, and I'm asking for ninety-one five of that back, and you net about $160,000. So I need you to approve that so they can uh, make the payment for me. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll just do a budget, budget amendment if we can at the next meeting uh, and, and, and transfer that from us to you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Unless you got questions, commissioners. Thank you. We have, uh, thank you. We have a uh, uh, Nature Conservancy in Northwest Florida Estuaries uh, Restoration Project uh, presentation scheduled uh, as well, and I just failed to announce it. Uh, Mr. Helms. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'm Jeff Helms. I'm with Atkins. Uh, we're the restore firm that you hired to support your local restore council navigate the process. Uh, before I get started, I do want to say something about our tax collector, a little more information that you need to know. Uh, he and I were born on the same exact day at the old Santa Rosa County Hospital on Stewart Street. It was a, uh, the tornado that hit that day. I think it killed about 13 folks in the community. It was one of the worst events that hit the city of Milton. Well, he was born a month early at four pounds. And uh, my mom delivered uh, me, I was almost 11 pounds. And uh, we were both born on April 1st. So that's the story of our lives. He's a, he, he's a politician, I'm a consultant. So uh, 
But just that's a little information that you probably didn't want to know about your tax collector. But anyway, I'm here today to ask uh, for a letter of support for a project. Now, I prepared a, a, uh, uh, just a real quick presentation on why I'm asking you for this support. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> this is the Restore Act that was signed into law by President Obama in July of 2012. Uh, this is the different buckets. Uh, next slide, next uh, click. What we're here today is to uh, request a letter in support of a project to receive, to pursue funds in the comprehensive plan component uh, section. Uh, these are the different buckets. A direct component is uh, administered by the U.S. Treasury, and that's your Restore Council is focused on, the, and that's the money that's coming directly to the county. The second goes to the council. That's the federal stand-up organization administers that. The third is the, uh, the council, uh, is, is the group consortium that uh, Commissioner Lynchard and Commissioner Melvin had attended uh, the Gulf Consortium meeting. That's 23 counties that will develop a plan on behalf of the state and then it's submitted to the council. Then you have the other ones, the uh, science program, the two and a half percent, and then the Centers of Excellence. Uh, next slide. Next steps. Uh, there was a webinar last night from the Department of Environmental Protection. There was uh, over 200 folks that attended, including Justin Ernworth, the, the Executive Director of the Federal Council, attended the meeting last night. Hunter attended it. Uh, Sheila Harris and myself attended the webinar. And this is the way forward for uh, basically the Council and the state. Uh, there's a, a submission window that closes uh, for the 11 council members. That's the five states and the federal agencies that are members of the large council. Each member, including the state of Florida, can submit five projects or programs to the council for consideration by November the 17th. Now, the uh, first set of funding, that, which is the Transocean funding, remember the billion dollar uh, civil fine settlement, uh, they will release 150 to 180 million dollars in the first round. So really, when, in the grand scheme, it's not a lot of money when you consider 11 agencies, five states. However, it is money uh, that the state wants to pursue. Uh, <clears throat> go to the next slide. Uh, the DEP, the Florida selection process, uh, the DEP uh, has a project portal and there's numerous projects. And I'll show you a slide, the next slide will show you how many. And they've, they've reached out to the different areas of 23 counties around the state on what their priorities are. They receive public input. And what they're going to do is put together a, a selection of projects or programs and give it to the governor for submission to the council. Next slide. This is the, uh, uh, the dots represent projects that have been submitted to the state in the FDEP portal. As you can see in the upper right, there's, there's closer to 1,200 projects and over 16 billion in environmental projects that have been submitted to the DP. And you look on the Escambia Santa Rosa portion, you see in the panhandle there's quite a few. And when you get to the South Florida, that's the National Estuary Program that they were federally funded years ago, and they developed uh, programs in that area. And a lot of those dots represent those projects. Next slide. So you see the amount of projects that the DEP has to filter. Now, the DEP in the state has developed a theme for the projects they, that they would like to support moving forward with the council. Keep in mind that the Transocean money is only a billion of the amount. When the settlement with BP is reached, and you remember they were uh, determined to be grossly negligent a few months ago. So as that goes through the court system and the final settlement is reached, there will be a lot more money in the process. But the state of Florida has identified a theme, estuary and watershed restoration. And estuary, just give you some information on that. It's very important. It's kind of like the hatchery, if you will, for the Gulf, where the water, salt water and the, uh, the fresh water meet. Next slide. <clears throat> and this is a watershed uh, theme. You know, any drop of water, storm water uh, that runs into our river streams, water quality type improvements, um, that's a theme. Next slide. Now, in the panhandle, on, at the webinar last night, they presented what they found in the different regions of the state. 
for the Northwest Florida area develop NEP-like programs. NEP, NEP is what I said earlier, a national estuary program developing projects. Southwest Florida, they've already got federally funded projects through national estuary programs. Uh, what Northwest Florida would like to do is develop those programs um, and, and identify projects that will benefit the Pensacola Bay uh, uh, watershed and the estuary, like East Bay uh, estuary, et cetera. Sedimentation from unpaid road systems in the rural communities in Northwest Florida, it was over $240 million in projects to address that, including at Eglin Air Force Base and the military installations, as well as the counties. Y'all are always dealing with this, trying to address those issues with your dirt road paving program. And then you see some of the, uh, the other uh, things that they've heard, BMPs, et cetera. Go to the next slide. Uh, successful project, Justin Earnsworth, uh, the director of, of the uh, council, the federal stand-up organization, presented this, and uh, Phil Corum with DP also presented this as what they consider to be a successful council project. Water quality and habitat are, are the two priority areas. Reasonable cost, gulf-wide significance, widespread support, and on and on scientifically sound environmental compliance. Next slide. Now, the state, on their webinar last night, this, was the, this is where they're at. They're looking at, at doing a variety of things. One, they could submit five discrete project submittals or proposals. Now, that's what Louisiana is doing. They're doing five, you know, they're building their, their, uh, some large marsh projects, and they've got five distinct projects. Mississippi has taken the second approach, five proposals by different categories, whether it's stormwater category or restoration or, or some other. Florida is looking at doing the estuary watershed proposal approach, where we look at the individual watersheds, Pensacola Bay, Perdido, Apalachicola, et cetera, and try to uh, address, not category, but, but rank projects that make the best improvements to those respective estuaries, regardless of category or type of project. That's the approach. It's a little more difficult to write those type proposals, but that's kind of the theme and the approach that they're taking. And they asked everybody for other options or concepts. Uh, next slide. Now, I'm asking you here today, uh, we've been over the last couple of months, since September 17th, when Phil Corum uh, met with the Gulf Consortium and announced that they had deadlines to meet uh, to request for council money. Uh, eight counties in Northwest Florida, we've been working together. It started at the meeting that you two guys attended um, in Sandestin. Well, we started thinking about, you know, Santa Rosa County submitting projects by themselves is a big leap when you have 1,200 projects, five states, 11 agencies. So how can we maximize our leverage in Northwest Florida? Well, we, we, we looked at, at working together as eight counties and, and creating a Northwest Florida Estuaries Restoration Project where we would all kind of work together and team up, pursue a large project, and have this as a project that could move forward and the council could fund it through, or the state and the Gulf Consortium, the 23 county organization could fund this group where we could get money funneling to the various estuaries. Uh, in watersheds in our area. Now, Scambia County originally took the lead on that, pr uh, prepared the project proposal. Uh, we proofed it and uh, with your staff. Uh, and the Nature Conservancy uh, modified a little bit and submitted it. They've been conducting the facilitation of the watersheds for the last year and a half. Uh, we've, your, your technical staff have been attending watershed meetings, trying to identify issues in the watersheds and identifying projects. So we're, we're here today to ask you to support uh, with a letter of support for this specific project because we feel like it gives us the best opportunity to compete for those large dollars at the federal level of the council as opposed to individual projects. Um, and what will happen is these projects will go through the Nature Conservancy facilitation process which we participate in, your staff, for say the Pensacola Bay watershed, if we have Holly by the Sea, if we have a Navarre or East Bay water quality program or other uh, projects, uh, then we could support it 
uh, through this program. So uh, that's, that's in a nutshell uh, my request. If you have any questions, I mean, I've got slides after slides beyond that I know you don't want to get into. Um, Just uh, one, I'm sure that you already thought of this, but have you done a straw man for us of what you would like to have from us? Uh, yes, you've got. You actually have a, a draft letter that okay. I think that Hunter is is put together, okay. and we're requesting that it actually go to the governor's office because right. the governor is going to actually make the final decision on which projects move on to the council. Exactly. So he has drafted the letter. So I'm just asking for support on that. Uh, do we need to take action on this today? Is there? Uh, yeah, we'd appreciate kind of, it because yeah. November the fifth is. Uh, they want That's, all comments yeah. by November the fifth, and we'd like to go ahead and get it in the. Uh, Resort Council uh, Tuesday voted unanimously to, to draft a letter okay. in support of this approach. Uh, there was another project. Uh, go, go forward a couple of slides. Uh, uh, there was another project that, uh, yeah, this one, that the county was also asked to support. And I want to throw that out because this is the north end of the county. And these are uh, basically a gully project, uh, seven projects in Santa Rosa and basically seven projects in Okaloosa County. Now, when you have a heavy rainstorm like we had in April 29th and 30th, you have tons of sediment coming from these gullies. And if they're not stabilized, it will continue to erode and go into our creeks, rivers, eventually into our bay. And that, and that uh, suffocates, if you will, our seagrasses and the, and the habitat areas in our bay. And so this is a project that USDA has proposed for us to also support. And, it, and I like it because it, it directly impacts the Pensacola Bay watershed. We're hoping that they will submit this separately as an agency, USDA agency project. But uh, these are the top projects that we're looking at to get funded through the council. Um, we think this is a very good project also, just to give you a, a different type of project. So, uh, but we would like for you to support the estuaries project, and if you would like to support this project also, by all means, uh, we have a draft letter supporting that one too. Um, and these are both great projects for both ends of the county. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff, on this gully project, has Okaloosa County taken any action to support this? Are you aware? Yes, they, they're, they're looking into doing the same thing we're doing. And again, I, I think this is, a, this is a, uh, worthwhile project for us to lend our support to because it's again it's a USDA project it's not one of the five that would come from the governor's office yeah. in Florida so this gives us two bites at the apple if you will um, if USDA submits this as an agency project um, and if, if we could approve this one let's send our letter of approval copy Okaloosa County so they'll see what we did what we've done on on yeah. this one I think that would be great. And, you know, the, the projects up in the north end may not be as attractive and as sexy, if you will, but they're very meaningful on these erosion that comes down. You know, you can do the stormwater quality project, and they're great. The estuary on the lower end is very, very important where the populace is. But that, that impacts all of us on the, on the south end. So. And the, uh, the estuary program, uh, again, all we've heard lately has been regional projects, large scale projects for the, uh, for the Gulf Coast Council. So I think that's our, our best shot at, at really getting some meaningful work done on this first round of funding. And it is, it's, it's, a, it's an initial round. It's only 150 or $180 million. And I say only because when you divide it among five states yeah. and however many miles and miles of coastland and, and uh, the, the number of, of inland bodies of water that we have from Texas to uh, Monroe County, um, it's not going to go very far, but we want to get something in there that, uh, that has the best shot of, of succeeding. I'll also remind uh, the board members, our Restore Council in December will be two years old. And our resolution when we set up that council provided for two-year terms for the appointed members of the council. Um, so be thinking about um, appointees. We'll need to take action at our December meeting. So between now and then, talk with your appointees if they want to remain on the Restore Council or, or rotate off. Uh, it is, it, it's been kind of a labor of love for those who have served to this point because it's been a lot of technical uh, working uh, with Jeff and Atkins and, and staff developing criteria, developing scoring matrices for um, projects of middles. 
And now we're getting to the point mm -hmm. where we're going to actually see real projects that we can start evaluating exactly. uh, in anticipation of preparing our multi year October 14th, uh, the money can actually flow as of last week uh, because that's when the interim final guidelines went into law and took effect. And so uh, now people can ask for money. And what's going to happen, you already approved the request to for an application to prepare the multi-year plan. So, Mr. Cole, you have a comment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jeff, a couple of things I, I, I heard that I just want to make sure we're cognizant of or ask a question of. When I hear working through Nature Conservancy, I want to make sure we're cognizant of uh, people's accessibility to that property in the long run. Uh, we've run into that before where once a piece of property is under protection of Nature Conservancy, it Right. has very limited usages so I, I want to make sure and that's a know, great public point. accessibility to that. that's a great point commissioner and, and and when we reviewed the application the comments that I made to uh, the county administrator and to Roger and your staff was this uh, have uh, nature conservancy do the facilitation like they've been doing mm -hmm. on the on the uh, watershed and all but when the implementation if we were very fortunate the state to get funding uh, my my request is that the money flow into the state so that you have an opportunity if a project is in Santa Rosa County, they could contract, do a contract with Santa Rosa County to implement that project so that you have control over the implementation working with the state. Uh, but that was my comments on the particular application um, okay. so that you have the control in the Restore Act, it gives you an opportunity to, to uh, to favor Florida firms, uh, contractors, et cetera, uh, because they were faced with economic issues too. Um, but it gives more control to the uh, elected officials. Okay. So the other thing I had is uh, on this estuary, estuary project, how, how, they, how much engineering and, and cost analysis have already gone into that? Do we have a, they have a price or they, they still have to work on that after? Well, it's a process that's been going along basically on a volunteer basis. Our, our okay. staff, your staff, has attended several meetings to identify issues, uh, whether it's sedimentation issues, phosphorus, nitrogen in the, in the water, et cetera. And then we're in the process of identifying projects in both Escambia and Santa Rosa County that would address those issues. And there'll be an evaluation process to prioritize those. And, so, they're, and Nature Conservancy is facilitating that. Through so a, they're all at a, basically just an it's estimated, basically, yeah, co you're, estimated you're, cost? At this yeah, time. you're doing estimating costs. Uh, some of them uh, have been designed. Some of them have been permitted. But the vast majority of them haven't been commissioner mm -hmm. and would require that. Right. And then on the final thing on, the, uh, on this uh, gullies uh, mm -hmm. and stuff, keep in mind uh, I still sit on, as chairman of the Bay Area Resource Council. Right. And any... Thing that we can leverage with the council funding and, and this funding, or you know, however we can work the two together to leverage, like we've talked about. Uh, keep that in mind, please. Absolutely, Bay Area Resource Council, and I've said it to the, the Restore Council at our Gulf Breeze meeting is a great avenue. Is already a stand-up organization that your members, City of Milton, City of Gulf Breeze, are members of that organization. So it's a great mechanism to funnel projects through. Quite Sorry. frankly, is, is if, if I could on the gully project is is Trent Matthews, the the the, the county uh, soil conservationist, has been working uh, as Commissioner Lynch had noted and, and Mr. Helms noted with Okaloosa County. So I, these are very much very similar to the EWP projects that we've done through the years on the the the, the restoration of those. Uh, watersheds and it really would be a, 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 those are very successful and and, and, and well done so uh, but, but know that the Trent and, and and his staff are, are, are working through I think they're they're actually out of Gainesville is, 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 is the uh, home office but they're they're involved in, in, in the in the selection that you see from the county. In any projects that, that really directly affect our watershed, we're going to try to bring to you for support and just kind of keep you in, uh, keep you in the loop on these these top projects that are very beneficial top projects. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> are we talking about supporting both projects? Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear. Say that again. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. We're talking about supporting both projects. Yes. Right. I just if want a clarification on yes, that. Thank you. Anything else from the commission before we open up the public? 
Jeff, if you'll hang with us here, I'm sure there will be a question or two. Yes, ma'am. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East, Milton. My question is, from an observer's point of view, it seemed that nobody knew what to do for a long time after the spill. My, one of my questions is, do we or have we established a procedure of things to do uh, after a spill so that it doesn't take us so long to react to it? And is this the appropriate place? Ms. Cantu, the response to the spill was largely governed by, or entirely governed by the federal government and the rules that they have in place. Um, I sat on the Commission on Oil Spill Response Coordination that the Florida legislature set up in 2013, I believe. And we went through about a year's worth of meetings uh, reviewing the spill, the response to the spill, and the procedures that were in place under the Oil Pollution Act um, and, and other federal uh, rulemaking guidelines. Um, the commission came up with a set of recommendations and analysis of the state response. We worked with the Coast Guard in, in um, coming up with the final report, uh, DEP, EPA, the Corps was involved um, and that study was presented to the governor's office I think January of 13 so is it right January of 13 January of 14 um, but that that again is from the state of Florida it's not federal so it's a recommendation that is in Florida's hands now and Again, it was requested by the state legislature, so they would be the ones to present that to the federal government and see if any of those ideas uh, would be implemented in the future. But is there any way that we can, because the federal government takes so long to act, that we can't do something to, to prevent things from getting further decreased? What do you mean? The, the situation decreased, I mean, more damage done because the federal government doesn't act, can't we do something? Well, you, you, you can, but if you do, you run the risk of bankrupting the county <laughs> because all of the, all of the response mechanisms, the, the cost of boom, the cost of monitoring vessels, all of that went up exponentially after the, the initial spill. And then the, as the magnitude of the spill became known, then it, it just got out of control. So the county can't go out and spend $20 million or $30 million on boom unless you get it approved through the appropriate federal, federal agencies okay. because if you do you're on the hook for it you won't get reimbursed necessarily and again from an observer's point of view when they started using dispersants to make the oil spread out more to me that seemed to be a ridiculous thing to do is that something that is has been identified as a negative thing or Oh yeah, that was the th that was the only thing we could do. The use of dispersants was addressed in the report, and the need for good science. Right. the The last question is: there was a note there that said that we should give our input to someone, and I wonder who that in who that input should go to. A note where. We'll get that on the bottom of his it, it, he's talking about, it, that, that was a screenshot. I got you. That was a screenshot from last night's um, uh, webinar, and 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 they were they were soliciting input specifically on that webinar. But I think there's an address that we can get to you that uh, you can send. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank. You. Wallace Mahout, 5500 Cox Road, Milton, Florida. Um, I, I just wanted to say that as I looked at all the projects, uh, the DEP and just the general projects that were submitted by the, by the public, it looks like there are um, a lot of them that are focusing on creating places for the public to enjoy the natural resources. So I, I don't think they're 
they're trying to take anything away from the public. It looks like they are trying to increase enjoyment for the public. Um, and I was wondering where the Navarre Wastewater Treatment Plant um, falls in these projects. I think it would fall in the, the potential projects for Pensacola Bay. Is, is that right? It, it would be. That would be one of those estuary and projects that, that could be identified in this study. It's been submitted in the portal, obviously, but this study would then populate projects that could be pursued uh, as the money becomes available. Okay, and can the commission um, give their opinion of what would be the most important projects for the area? Because I think this one would be a really uh, important project because it's going to, uh, going to um, fix and make better the disbursement of the effluent down there at the a wastewater treatment the, plant. The, the county would have input and, and work hand in hand, I'm, I'm sure, with the Nature Conservancy to develop these estuary uh, master plans, if you will, um, because they'll come to the local, uh, not just governments, but local interested parties, you know, everybody who has a stake in that, which really is everybody who lives here, to uh, develop and prioritize those projects. Okay, I, I just want to mention... This is not a project that would be submitted at this round because we're looking for regional right. impacts. Right, but um, because it will help with a better disbursement of the effluent and even reuse of that effluent, you know, for maybe they could use it for watering down there. I just, I just think that's a really important project. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we need approval from the board for the chair to sign these two letters that Mr. Helms needs us to sit. And I uh, move those with objection. Hearing that passes, we'll get that out in the afternoon mail if we can, Jeff. All right, we have two hearings now. <clears throat> the first is the 930 public hearing. Uh, purpose is for submittal of an application to the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program for a grant for improvements to Navarre Park located at 8515 Navarre Parkway. And uh, we'll take that input now, Ms. Chila. Thank you. Um, Roger, can you pull up the 930 public hearing PowerPoint? Um, this uh, public meeting was advertised in each of the three county uh, newspapers, and the pur purpose of me giving this pr presentation is to um, notify the public of the proposed improvements and accept feedback on the application. Um, the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant is a, um, next slide, Roger, is a competitive uh, grant program to provide assistance to local governments to develop or acquire land uh, that will be used for recreational purposes. And the projects must be for the sole purpose of providing recreational opportunities. The maximum grant request is $200,000. Applications may only in involve one project site. There are matching requirements uh, for projects greater than $50,000, and you can see those um, different uh, categories listed there. Um, just additional details about the program. More than half of the project requ request must be for primary recreation facilities, and some examples are listed there for your information. The next slide, um, you can request funding for support facilities, um, but it cannot be more than um, half of the project request, and some of those examples are bathrooms, uh, lighting, parking. So the first application that we are talking about is Navarre Park, located on Highway 98 in Gulf Breeze at the foot of the Navarre Beach Bridge. Um, the next two slides include the existing facilities there, and down at the bottom you can see that the bathroom is under construction. Um, and a little bit of history about this park, we did apply in last year's application cycle for this park, including the bathroom, and it was not funded. Uh, so basically this year we're just simply removing the bathroom facility, which was a good um, part of last year's budget. You can see there the site pictures. Um, the improvements we are proposing to include in this year's application include a kayak launch that will be um, constructed for users of all abilities, uh, additional pieces of special needs equipment to the playground, 
We're looking at doing a shaded picnic area, uh, improvements to the basketball court, and a small landscaping um, item that will create a little bit of a buffer between the parking lot and Highway 98 as there is a little bit of a safety concern for children that um, are in the parking lot. This particular project we chose to limit to the small project development category of $50,000 or less. Um, we felt that it was a good project and that it would have a greater chance of being funded at that um, smaller level. The next slide shows a couple of different options of what we're thinking about for the kayak launch. Um, at last year's public meeting, we had attendees that represented the, I believe it was the Wounded Warriors program that meets fairly regularly at Navarre Park and uh, takes the wounded veterans um, on kayak trips. And so they were uh, really supportive of this amenity. Next uh, slide shows an example of the shaded picnic area that we um, are proposing to include. So again, this particular application is a $50,000 request. There is no local match requirement. Uh, we do get additional points for demonstrating a park partnership and the Navarre Chamber Foundation group has committed 10% uh, of the total project cost to go towards the project, which uh, gets us a few extra points. Um, we did go over this at last night's Parks Advisory Committee meeting and received input then. And then also we will be asking for comments shortly today. And then we, like I said, last year we had a community meeting at the Navarre Chamber and received comments on the same items that we're pro proposing in this cycle. And uh, this particular program, although we have had significant success over the last couple of decades with this park program funding our park developments in the county, uh, the last several years have seen a, a hit in the allocations. In the last two years, they only chose to fund the small project developments. Uh, we have been seeing the money go up a little bit. The projects will be scored and ranked later this year, and then the legislature will um, allocate funding in April, and if awarded, that will be made in July of next year. Um, so at this time, if we could um, have any comments or questions. Anything from the commissioners? Anything from the public? Just, uh, we will uh, move on to, and I think this next one's yours as well, Sheila. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you for that catch. Yeah. The, the next public hearing is going to have to wait until at least 10 o'clock. Uh, so we will move back to the uh, economic. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's move approval of the uh, two thousand of the uh, nine thirty uh, public hearing uh, referencing the Navarre Park, and I do so without objection. There, now it passes. Now, pending ten o'clock, we'll start the economic development. Mr. Chairman. Economic Development Committee, I have two items now with Commissioner Cole's add-on. The first one is recommend resolution designating Project Airwolf as a qualified target industry QTI pursuant to applicable Florida statutes, including a local match in the amount of $20,000. We talked about this on Monday. Uh, everything, all the backup materials in your book. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, I would move approval without objection. We've got a comment from the public. Okay. Coming. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East, Milton. My question about this project is um, we're, we're constantly told that you bring in more industry, it's better for the citizens but we don't know how much it's going to cost us and how much we're going to get from it. My question is, how much is the government going to give to this company and what are we going to get in exchange for it? Shannon, would you come forward, please? <coughs> according, to the, according to the background information, is it's going to be, uh, it'll be $20,000 20, is the I, I match to the, UTI program, and they'll d develop uh, 25 jobs uh, at a rate in excess of 150% of the average county income uh, over a three-year period. 
as we discussed Monday, that those will be uh, uh, determined uh, uh, retrospectively. Uh, they have to create the jobs and have them on the payroll before they, uh, uh, for a year before they're eligible for any of the um, payment. And, and, and also to add Mr. Walker's comments that this 20,000 is paid out over a course of a five year uh -huh. period as the company creates X number of jobs our match of that 20% is at that end of that given year. So what we get in return of that, we give them, uh, our match is 20%, what we get out of it is 25 jobs, basically $60,000 a piece. They're buying, buying a building, they're paying taxes on that building. And uh, those 25 people are paying, or uh, using those salaries in the community, so. It also says the a a annual wage of $60,000, so that's the, the average annual. Yes, sir. So there's no tax incentive given to this company as far as decreasing their property taxes or? No. no. And they're going to purchase a building that we already have out there? They're for my private individual, yes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if yes, there are no other comments, I would move approval without objection. Here none, it passes. Do you have us add on item by Commissioner Cole? Yeah, next one is uh, Commissioner Cole's add-on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I added this to economic development because we all know that how important agriculture is to the economy of Santa Rosa County. Uh, the University of Florida IFAS Center this Friday night is holding a fall harvest dinner uh, from 6 to 9 o'clock at 4253 Experimental Road, Highway 182 in Jay, Florida. Uh, for those of you that don't know where that's at, don't go to Jay, Florida for it. It's the 182 runs from Allentown over to Commissioner Salter's famous Schmuckla. So it's halfway, about halfway in between the two. So that's where our IFAS Center is. And to me, the IFAS Center is a jewel in Santa Rosa County that we really haven't polished yet. We need to, I think in the years to come, we need to focus on just how important that center is to uh, what goes on in Santa Rosa County with our agriculture. But the entertainment that night is uh, Jody Fuller. He's a comedian, speaker, and also a soldier, three-time Iraqi war veteran. Uh, he's, and it's a hilarious journey from a, of a stuttering kid in Alabama to the battlefields of Iraq and also a band up there, the Blue Torch Band, for uh, any dancing or just entertainment. But the tickets are uh, $50 a person or $60 at the door, and the proceeds of this is going to uh, use to convert an existing equipment building at the J Research Facility into a conference facility for faculty, students, and the public. So if you can get out and support that uh, in any way, uh, I'm sure they'd love to have you up there for that uh, tomorrow night. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that, Commissioner Cole. And I understand they got some other very good speakers as well, one being the commissioner from District 3. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so item number two is informational only. Uh, we'll begin the administrative uh, stuff, and then we'll interrupt at 10 o'clock or as close to 10 o'clock as we can find a clean breaking point. Uh, Item number one is uh, recommend resolution authorizing the submission of the FY 2015-16 Florida Recreational Assistance Program, the FRDAP grant application in the amount of $50,000 for improvements to the Navarre Park. We've got the details before you there, same as Monday. I recommend approval by objection. Here and it passes. And Mr. Chairman, if you could hold off on number two, this is actually the item on your uh, second public hearing at 10 o'clock. We have to put it on the agenda twice. The state wants to see that there was a public hearing, plus mm -hmm. you took the action to approve the resolution. So that's why it's on here twice. Okay, sir. We appreciate that. So uh, item number two is on hold. Item number three, recommend a settlement of claim with Ashley Heist Parker in the amount of $100,000 and William Dustin Parker in the amount of $35,000 for a 2009 motor vehicle accident is authorized by the county insurer, which is the Florida Association of Counties Trust Bank. Uh, recommend approval, without objection. Here, none passes. 
Item number four is recommended proposal in the amount of $59,293 from SCS engineers for 2015 semi-annual water quality sampling of the county-owned landfills as required by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. I recommend approval without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number five is recommend suspension of the Navarre Beach lease fee policy based on input received from the Florida Office of the Attorney General pending the review of the, of the uh, options at the uh, November 10th, 2014 Committee of the Whole meeting. And uh, questions from the board? And this will just direct the, the clerk not to enforce the current uh, or to, to, I guess, enforce is the right word, any uh, uh, lease credit Implement, on the far yeah. beach until, until you meet the 10th to, to determine what actions, uh, if any, you can take. Yes, sir. Mr. Coley. Good morning. Robert Coley, 8271 Gulf Boulevard, Navarre, Florida. Um, I, I just want to point out to everybody, and I'm sure some of you probably know this, but I realize how unfair <clears throat> the types of leases are that we've got out there on the beach. Um, you know, we had the lawsuit, now we're all paying ad valorem tax just like everyone else in the county is, yet we're still uh, stuck with having to pay lease fees. <clears throat> some of those lease fees are as much as the ad valorem tax is. They vary all over the place there. My particular one is only $250 a year. It's not a huge deal. But there, I know there's some people out here that um, they are paying $1,300 a year, some of them more than that. <clears throat> so it's really imperative that we get this thing settled. I know you've all publicly proclaimed before that you wanted to, to uh, not treat us unfairly by not charging lease fees and paying ad valorem taxes, but uh, you know, the, the, the suit was over back in July and people are still paying and you're, and you're fixing to send out the, uh, <clears throat> the tax bills and there won't be a credit for people that are paying their taxes. So um, there's a very simple solution to this actually. Uh, it seems simple to me. Over the years, all of the leases out there, most all of them have been amended one way or another. I know my lease on my condo has been amended at least twice. And uh, why don't you just amend the leases to change the amount of, uh, of uh, the lease fee? Um, if, you have, if you own a piece of property and you lease it to somebody else for a period of time, uh, that's always up for negotiation what you're paying the person to lease that property. So. Why can't you do that? That seemed like a very simple thing to me. I'd like to hear if there's any comments from Mr. Andrews on that. The, um, well, the, the Attorney General's opinion and the Florida Supreme Court on four different occasions has, has held that the uh, payment of lease fees is separate and apart from the payment of the ad valorem taxes, uh, that there are separate issues. Um, and that it would be an unconstitutional exemption um, if there was a dollar-for-dollar dollar credit or offset for lease fees for the amount of taxes that were paid. That's what we're dealing with at this point. There are 2,002 leases approximately on Navarre Beach, and there are a, a, um, a number of different terms that are set forth in those leases. We have... Um, undertaken along with the property appraisers office to review those categories and that would be something that could be discussed by the the commission at the November 10th, at the November 10th hearing um, a um, um, in order to justify an amendment for a lease that uh, was entered into by both parties and, and in which the leaseholders received the benefit of the ability to to reside and uh, do business in certain circumstances on Navarre Beach, there'd have to be some basis for that uh, modification. There are some leases that might um, be um, um, subject to an amendment on a public policy basis. Um, a lease uh, that has a lease fee of $250 a year 
uh, it would not be one in my opinion. So, um, you know, that's something that the commission can take a look at. That's what we intend to do. Um, and, um, and the commission then can make a decision in regard to what's appropriate going forward, if anything. But we can't give a credit against taxes for lease fees. I, I understand that, but I, I don't, since you have amended hundreds and hundreds of leases on Laura Beach over the last 30 something years, I, I fail to see why you can't amend the lease in terms of the amount of the money that they're paying. It's something that we can look at. Uh, I know there's a couple of things that y'all have done in the past. You've had an agreement with the uh, Summer Winds project before they even started to build that project in terms of what kind of lease fees they would pay. Uh, that's an, I believe that's an agreement that you've already got with them. How's this affecting that situation? That's, uh, that would be one of the leases that we'd be looking at. And what about the Hollycorp lease? Again, that was recently renegotiated. It'd be something that, we'd, that the board would have to, to um, reconsider. There was an amendment entered into in that lease in June of this year. So Mr. Andrews, are you, are you saying that there's gonna be some leases that may qualify to be amended and others that are not? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that the commission is going to review that and make a decision in regard to it in accordance with our understanding of um, the law of the state of Florida and the Florida Constitution. So that's a, that's a possibility perhaps. Do we have any idea what Pensacola Beach is doing about their situation? Um, I think they're looking at it also. They haven't made it, they, may, they haven't made any determination that I'm aware of, other than, other than the, the decision that was rendered in 2008 by, by the Attorney General that said that they could not give a credit for commercial lease fees um, for the amount of ad valorem taxes. Well, I think you can all agree that we've got a real mess on our hands here that's not fair for the leaseholders on the water beach. And I, trust that you're going to be able to come up with something that is equitable and fair for everybody. I think we're on the record uh, across the board this is in, in, in support of the concept. If, uh, if we can just amend the lease and accomplish the same thing, uh, we take that under advisement, but we've got to be sure that it's going to pass that test at the end of the table down there. So yeah. thank you. Commissioner Cole. Robert, uh, I, I just encourage everybody also to, to write, you know, uh, Congressman Miller, Rubio, you know, all that. I know we've done that before, but we can't continue to reiterate that, how important that is to get that fee simple. Yeah, I, I presume that the fee simple title bill would solve this problem. It would. and, and I, well, I'm not sure. I mean, it's... Um, if, if, if the leaseholders were granted fee simple title to the property, the lease would go away. Okay. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of confidence that that's going to pass anytime no. soon. I know that it's in Congress, and yeah. Lord knows where that'll go. But uh, I'll be sure you every time I get to Washington, I'll put a bug in your ear, too. We appreciate that. Thank you, John. All right, sir. Uh, yeah, we can start that. We'll need to. That will start. Okay. Just brought back now. We need to do our 10 o'clock public hearing. You have a question regarding uh, which particular? Yeah, we didn't take any action on. Uh, yeah, we didn't take any action on number five, and uh, we're going to go. We need to clean that one up before we start the uh, ten o'clock, so we don't get it any more befuddled than it already is. Uh, Based on uh, the input from from staff and uh, on the attorney general, I understand uh, we're going to uh, move to uh, accept their continue. recommendation without. Well, answer. just a second. Yeah, you, just, you can just, continue public comment after the public hearing, correct? Yes, sir. But would you wait till you're okay. called on? So we don't need to yeah. decide on it right now. That's so right. We heard public comment, right? What's the little board? Do you want to go ahead and clear this issue and then hear the comments? Yeah, let's wrap this up, Steve. All right, I recommend it. Uh, right. I'm sorry. 
yeah, uh, recommend approval without objection of the, of the uh, public hearing. That doesn't make sense now. I'm totally off. Mr. Off. Chairman, can, can we go ahead and take the public comment on the item, item number five? five? Yeah. And then wrap that up and then go into our public hearing on the parks. Can yeah, we do that? We, we haven't hit the 10 o'clock public hearing. Yeah, we haven't had public comment. Right. Yes, ma'am. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East Milton. I know we've discussed this before, but my understanding of the problem with the leasehold agreements is that so long ago, the county or the state could not sell the property or did not want to sell the property and they leased it. So there were people who leased property and, and now they're having to pay that lease cost plus taxes. Is that not right? Okay. So the, the problem now is that they're told they're paying two kinds of taxes. When I bought my property, I had to pay for the property and then I pay taxes on it. And if the people who had the leases are simply turned, have that property turned over to them without paying to the state or the county for it, then to me that's an unfair uh, proposition for the other taxpayers of the county. Is that not right? Commissioner Cole. Ms. Cantu, that probably would have been true had this been occurring 30 five years ago, 30 years ago, where people were in, there was an incentive to go out there and, and start to develop our beach because nobody was out there. I feel pretty sure that since then, there's very few of those original leaseholders that got the property under a lease. More than likely, most people have paid a value for that property, took over the lease, and then continue to pay the lease and now are also being taxed for with Avalorum tax. So I really think if we look through the records, we wouldn't find but a handful of people that perhaps are under the original lease of that long ago. So there was a cost that they occurred to either build a condominium, build a home, buy a piece of property from the original owner to now have that lease in their name. But people who are buying property now and the rest of the, in the remainder of the county are having to pay an increased price for that property more than what it was 20 or 30 years ago. What I would like to see is if you're going to have any kind of discussion on this, have a separate discussion so that it can be explained to all the taxpayers of the county exactly how this change is going to affect all the taxpayers, not just the leaseholders on the beach. That's does that enough. make sense? It, it does, Ms. Cantu. I think you, you framed the question that we're going to have to answer in the future quite well. And, and it comes back to public policy. What is the public policy that justifies reduction or am amendment of a lease to waive the fee? Because that is a legal binding contract mm -hmm. right now between the county and the, the county as lessor, the uh, uh, lease on, leasehold owner out on the, the beach as lessee. So there's a there's a binding agreement right now between those two parties, and when we amend a lease to reduce the fee, well, we we are uh, relieving the lessee of a legally binding obligation. So do, is there a valid public policy ser served by reducing that fee? That's and you're representing the rest of the taxpayers of the county or the state, so it's up to you to make sure that you're being fair to the rest of the taxpayers as well. That's, that's why it's public policy. It, Thank it, you. It's fair to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You need, need to press the right-hand button to make the red light come on. There you go. Name and address, uh, please. My name is Pam Johnson, and uh, <clears throat> my address is 8520 Gulf Boulevard, Buena Vida. Uh, I just wanted to kind of support you all know, what uh, Robert had said about the leases. I own two properties. One has a lease that has never changed that's very minimal. Um, got told in Ivan, moved across the street, 
and uh, that lease went from $500 up to, I think, like $1,600 because of the purchase price at the wrong time. But uh, anyway, that credit makes a tremendous amount of difference. Uh, and when you look at the leases, uh, a lot of people think out here that we're only paying like $100 or $200 for a lease. And uh, that is way different. You're paying, you know, by the time you pay the taxes and, you know, a 1000 or $1,500 lease, even with the credit coming back, that makes a tremendous amount of difference. So I just wanted to make the statement that there are a lot of us that, you know, pay quite a bit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Teresa Pack, 8501 Gulf Boulevard, Navarre, Florida. Uh, to help answer some of Ms. Cantu's questions that she had, we are the second largest income producer in this county. We collect lease fees, property taxes, uh, bed taxes, sales taxes from the tourists who come out there. The, we also have in our lease fees, if you rent your property, you have to pay an additional 5% tax on your gross rental income. I don't think the people who live up here in Milton who rent property have to pay that 5% fee. We're paying lease fees and property taxes. Now, you mentioned $250. Robert mentioned $250. That's not much per individual, but there are 113 units in the building that I live in. Multiply $250 times 113 and see the amount of property taxes and lease fees that you are collecting on that one piece of property. My property taxes are almost $4,000 a year. There are very few properties here in Milton, Jay, or the other part of the county that pay that amount of property taxes. Our properties are valued at $450,000 to $500,000, $800,000. We are blessed that we, are be, we have the money to be there and not everybody does. But I think that we are more than supporting this county with the money that we're putting into it. So double taxing, paying lease fees and property taxes is not fair. We would ask that you look at the situation we may be years getting a fee simple title through Congress. So please give us some relief. We're not living off the county. We're paying more than our fair share. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. And just for clarification, uh, we started this item seeking some relief and uh, this has been going on for several, several months, maybe as much as a year. And uh, what we have to do is find a way forward that is legally acceptable. When we started talking about dropping the lease fees to a dollar, et cetera. That brought the Attorney General's opinion into this conversation. Very good, very good recommendation from Mr. Coley about, well, can you just amend the lease? And the, the attorney told us all that that's an idea and he'll have to evaluate that, to see whether or not that can happen. So what we're trying to do is find a way forward. We understand the problems, but until we can get, you know, we now know that Item number five here, we can't, we can't do anything with the lease fees based on what the Attorney General has told us. We may be able to amend the lease as, as totally opposed to the forgiveness uh, avenue. So that's what we're trying to do. And your, your input's more than welcome, but that's what we're struggling toward as we speak. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East Milton. What I want is fair, not what uh, earns the county more taxes, but what's fair to everybody, not only the leaseholders, but the people who are not leaseholders. I was just thinking that Mr. Nichols presented such a good presentation on the um, program he said the other day. What was it? Um, I forget what it was anyway on, on uh, getting borrowing money on your property anyway. Why don't you task him with explaining this to the taxpayers of Santa Rosa County so that we can understand exactly what's going on so that we can decide what's fair to everybody? Can we not? With input, with input and recommendations from an expert, 
The expert financial officer would be, in this case, would be Mr. Chairman, Mr. Nichols? If I may, Ms. Yes, Cantu, that's what we're trying to get to. So we're not prepared to respond today, but as we move forward, if we need to have those kind of experts, we surely will. So that's my okay. recommendation. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning. I'm Michelle Tucker at 2742 Noah Jordan Road. I'm just curious, and it's kind of a question as much as just thinking um, different thoughts. With the original leases originating from Escambia County to Santa Rosa County, do you think that if there was some kind of a, a consent agreement from Escambia County to Santa Rosa County that there might be some bearing on the decision of the Attorney General? Have you reached out to, is there any reason to reach out to the two commissions working together? Um, Michelle, the, <clears throat> the Attorney General's opinion that's referenced was directed to the SRIA because they, they tried to implement a similar lease credit policy and the Attorney General said there's no constitutional basis for that. Okay. So it's not, it's not between the two counties, it's, it's Florida State Constitution that, that does not provide for this type of exemption. I was just thinking that in the past I'd always heard that the two county commissioners uh, boards had to work together in order to facilitate the fee simple going forward. So I wondered if there might be some correlation between getting this fixed. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, Tim Cohane, 1466 Homeport Drive, Navarre Beach, Florida. Uh, gentlemen, I'm also the uh, incoming president of the Navarre Beach Leaseholders and Renters Association. I, just, I, I know that you gentlemen want to do the right thing. You have, you have been on record saying you'd like to reduce it to a dollar. I want to uh, just let you know that I support Mr. Coley's recommendation. I also have a suggestion that if you are not able to amend those lease fees, that the money collected from those lease fees remain on the beach for development. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Appreciate your comment. Good morning. Rob Williamson, 7018 Summit Drive. The question I have is related to time. How much time do we have if there's going to be a decision to amend the lease fees? Because I guess we already have precedent that lease fees have been amended by this body in the past, correct? So the county commissioners do have the legal authority to amend the lease fees on the beach, is that correct? The county commission has the authority to uh, amend a lease if there is a public policy purpose served thereby. Uh, and I think that as we've expressed, that's the issue. I mean, I get the big picture that, you know, it's a, it's a lot of money. You know, we're talking close to a million dollars to the county, but I would think the public policy would be there's no right way to do the wrong thing. It's fairness. You know, there's folks around, I don't, you know, the lease money I understand is supposed to be for the use of the property and the assessed value of the property taxes at Valorum that are paid are for the services that the county provides. Um, but I'm wondering how much of a burden does this board expect Navarre Beach to carry? Um, and if you do not act quickly on this matter, I go back to the original question, how much time do we have to amend the lease fees, if at all, or make this body to make a determination and say, because of public policy, we don't feel it's the right course of action, or we do, um, you know, how much time do we have to get that done I really don't think that there's any specific limitation on the time that the, the county can, can take action if there's a justification for the action they take. Do they start paying taxes here soon? I mean, can they, is it they November? They are paying taxes now. This will suspend the lease fee credit that is clearly unconstitutional, and that will be effective today. And the reason we're doing it today is because your tax bills are going out in November. And I appreciate the leeway, Mr. Chairman. I, I understand what the decision is today. I'm just curious, um, you know, if we run up against a date certain where it's, look, if you haven't amended the lease fees by this date, then they were gonna, they're going to have to pay the lease fees this year. 
and we'd have to revisit it next year. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, the lease fees are, are determined by the date that they're paid are, are determined by each lease. Okay. So some might have more time than others. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, I might add too, if I may. Yes, sir. Part of uh, number five basically says recommend suspension of our beach lease fee policy based on input from Florida Office of the Attorney General pending review of options at November the 10th meeting. So what we're doing today is trying to gather what we would, might sure. decide come right. November the 10th and so in between. We know that we may not suspend. We, the Attorney General said that, that's, that, that is something we cannot do. We don't know whether or not we can amend and, and that's the next avenue of uh, approach to that. All right, I recommend approval of item number five without objection. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just an observation or two. One, I'd like to thank Ms. Cantu for the confidence that she places in me to explain this board's policy on the taxes. Um, our, our office is, is happy to provide an explanation to the public on any question they have that our office is involved in, whether that be the collection of property taxes or the procedures that are in place whenever someone has delinquent taxes. When I go and speak in the public, many times people jokingly comment about the tax collector and if, if you look from a historical standpoint, you look back towards biblical times and the tax collectors were hated in those days. But that's because the tax collectors had a, a huge amount of authority to decide whatever, whatever money they could collect over and above what they had to give the Romans they could keep for themselves. Well, our forefathers had the insight to have separation of duties and we're blessed here in Santa Rosa County that we have men and women of integrity that are making those decisions. For, we're, we're blessed to have Roy Andrews, who represented the tax collector's office and the property appraiser's office for many, many years. Not many attorneys have a good understanding of tax law. We're fortunate in Santa Rosa County to have that. We have men on the, county, the Board of County Commissioners who or trying to do the right thing. So I have full confidence in this board and in our staff to provide the direction that we need. And then of course the separation of duties, my office couldn't change what's on someone's tax bill or the tax collection process if I wanted to. So I I'm grateful that our forefathers, those that drafted the Florida Constitution had the foresight to have that separation of duties. So. Thank you, Ms. Cantu, but also thank you to our board and to our staff members for the excellent job that you all do. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right, uh, I recommend approval of item number five without objection. There and none, it passes. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, you wanna take a break? You know, I know, but do you wanna take a break? All right. Sure. All right, now we drop back to the 10 a.m. public hearing. And for those that don't understand, you can start any time after a designated start time, but you can't start before, and that's why we've had to put it off. Uh, public hearings, uh, submittal of an application for Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant for improvement to Benny Russell Park, located at 5417 West Spencerfield Road in Pace. Uh, gentlemen, please talk to um, Roger, uh, if you could just start on um, like the fourth slide. Um, the first part of the presentation is the same as the other one, so we'll go ahead and start with um, specifics about this application located at 5417 West Spencerfield Road. Um, a little bit of background just about this particular park. Um, at the last Board of County Commissioners meeting, um, we brought forth um, several potential projects um, within the county. and. Uh, this board selected the Navarre Park and the Benny Russell Park for us to um, work on for development of the application. So at this park existing, um, you can see the items that, um, next slide Roger, are listed um, that are at this park. It's one of the, I think, the county's most uh, popular playground parks. Um, there's some pictures list uh, included there of the playground and the building on the next slide. 
Um, this particular park um, has been identified as uh, for development of a tennis complex, and I believe um, Commissioner Districts 1 and 3 have been um, working on that for a few years. And so what we're proposing in this application um, is to build an all-inclusive playground, which is basically a, a playground that can be used by um, users of all abilities. Um, additional covered picnic areas to service that new playground addition. We're looking at um, a multi-sport court that could be added to um, implement the recreational activities there or um, enhance the rec rec recreational activities. A hiking trail for both exercise and to link the different areas of the park. Um, we're looking at building a portion of the tennis courts that are uh, being uh, planned for development building a restroom to support the tennis facility and some additional um, support facilities for the tennis area. And we are looking at a $400,000 budget. Um, those items that you see listed there, the costs are mostly firmed up. We're still working on some of these estimates, um, but those numbers for the playground and the restroom are pretty secure. Um, Next slide, we are asking for the FERDAP grant to fund half of that at 200,000 and the local match would come from District 1 recreation funds. Um, we've also asked the Pace Area Tennis Association to support the project with a 10% um, contribution and they are expected to approve that prior to the application submittal. Um, we did discuss this at last night's Parks Advisory meeting and are accepting public comment um, at today's meeting. And again, same information provided earlier. Um, we will know uh, sometime next year if this project is funded. And um, because this particular project is part of a larger park development, I would expect that if this grant is funded, um, we would come back with a recommendation um, on this grant, but also um, the bigger picture uh, to request moving forward with the tennis development as well as these items included in the application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sheila, I just want to say thank you very much for your work on this as well as Tammy. She's not here today, but you guys will probably get tired of seeing me on some of these. Uh, Things. As I stated on Monday, our good commissioner from District 3 and our former commissioner, who I think was a very good commissioner, um, had put some funds to go towards the Pace uh, Tennis Center, and it's a project we've been trying to complete. This money would go a long way for us to be able to, uh, to do what we committed to, and that's uh, having some tennis courts out at Pace. And I also want to reiterate how excited I am about having a 100% all-inclusive uh, park to be a portion of one of our parks right in Pace and in Santa Rosa County because we're creating that environment of a child with a disability playing right next to a child with no physical disability. And just like I said at Monday's meeting, that child with no disability looks over and says, you know what, that child in a wheelchair with walkers is just like me. And then the child who is in a wheelchair looks over at that child who has no physical dis disability and says, you know what, I'm just like him or her. And we create an environment in our community that says, every child, no matter if they have a disability or no disability, they deserve a place to play and they deserve a place in our society. So I think it just goes a long way with the mindset of what we're uh, trying to do here in Santa Rosa County. And I'm proud that Santa Rosa County will be on the forefront of this because we'll be one of the, that would be one of the first, if not the first, 100% all-inclusive parks in Northwest Florida. So it makes me proud to say that Santa Rosa County is on the cutting edge to that. We're doing some things that aren't going to have to be done until 2016, 17, and 18 but we're stepping forward now and trying to get them uh, done early. And I can commit to that when this does go in front of the committees in Tallahassee, I will be there uh, walking the halls, trying to make sure that we secure this funding for the park at Benny Russell and for the project in Navarre. So I just thank you uh, for the board's support on this. Okay. Ms. Cantu, do you have a remark to make? Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East Milton. I always wondered whether or not some of the parks were used very much, and I just wondered if, if there's a procedure for the people that actually use the park to take care, uh, part in cleaning up and things like that. Do you have that kind of program? 
Ms. Cantu, we have a, a work crew that we had, I believe it was at one of the last meetings, we either extended it or, or where they go, um, an inmate crew that goes and takes care of the parks when they're closed. Uh, so they are, you know, they are taken care of and that's all the facilities around the county. I, I don't think I'm misspeaking uh, by saying that. But that's not user involvement. That's uh, a crew that the county pays? No. We have, uh, at least in my end, uh, very good participation by the yeah. users. They're proud of what they have and they, they help keep it clean. And I think that's probably true all the way across the county. Mr. Chairman. That makes a difference when you feel like, you know, putting more money into it, whether or not the users actually take part in taking care of it. I appreciate it. Thank you. And Ms. Cantu, this money or the, the organization with the tennis program, they're going to be very, you know, um, uh, we're going to be adamant about them helping keep that center clean, but they're, they're going to be very um, proud of that center when it's completed. And um, so, yes, they're going to take care of their portion as well. Thank you. I appreciate Ms. it. Ms. Cantu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Ms. Cantu, you said, is there a policy, which, you know, it, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because the policy is what we've learned all our life. I mean, we don't have a county ordinance that says if you use this park, you've got to clean it up. I think it's part of what we've learned all our life that we need to continue to teach our children. You know, you hold doors for people, you say thank you, you take your hat off in public, you clean up after yourself, you say the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, the, you know, the things that, that I think a lot of the moral fiber that perhaps we're losing in our country, and we certainly need to keep reiterating that to our young people. So. Okay, next up is, uh, I don't know, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead, approve, Mr. Chairman. Could you approve number two on the admin? That's the actual submission by. of the application, and that'll get us past that. Well, uh, okay. You're ready for action. Uh, uh, item number two for action now. Do I understand what you just That's said? That's correct. All right. Uh, we'll clean this one up. The administrative committee action item two, which we placed on hold earlier in the meeting, uh, we dealt with what we needed to deal with. I recommend approval without objection. Here and it passes. Now let's take 10, please, to be back in place uh, at quarter two. Hmm. Damn, Jeff actually was a little boat. He did that. That's not so much
please make your way back to your seats. And if you've used your phone uh, during the break, please make sure it uh, is still on uh, silence or vibrate. All right, we're administrative committee uh, item number six, which is a uh, no action item uh, for this morning. It will be disposed of tonight. Uh, it's recommended resolution for the Emerald Coast Utility Authority, EUC, ECUA, to provide, operate, and maintain a solid waste and recyclables collection and, re and distribution center in Santa Rosa County. Action to be taken at the rezoning meeting tonight at 6 p.m. October 23rd. I recommend approval of the objection. I'm sorry, I don't, and you're right. So there's no action on that. It's just noted for the record that'll be disposed of, as I said, uh, at the meeting tonight. Item number seven, unless otherwise noted, all the meetings will be held in the boardroom, this boardroom here, Santa Rosa County Administrative Center. It's an extensive list. It's available on the internet, and uh, for those who are present in the audience that want a copy, we'll provide you a, a paper copy. And uh, recommend uh, approval of the objection. Here none passes. Engineer's report, Mr. Blaylock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Our first item is we recommend the preliminary plat for Holly Hills, a 55 lot subdivision located in Working District 4. Comments? Do you have a comment regarding this item? Yes, ma'am, come on down. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East Milton. I've noticed there's an awful lot of subdivisions going in, and my concern is about the sewage and the water. Where's the water coming from, and where's the sewage going? Not just for this particular subdivision, but all the ones that you have listed. Ms. Cantu, we have a uh, land development code that dictates each of those items, mm -hmm. and as long as those subdivisions meet the requirements of water and sewer disposal, then they are deemed to comply and we bring it to the board. So the water generally comes from a public water system. In this one in particular, be Holly Navarro water system providing water and sewer. And you're not concerned about the availability of water for all these subdivisions that are going in? As part of their comprehensive planning process, all of those utilities have to submit reports to our development services that say they have water. And when we submit these plans, they have to sign off on all of the DEP uh, water extension permits saying they have the capacity. So yes, there's a system of checks and balances where the water systems are committing to this Cambria subdivision that water is available. And all the problems that we had with the sewage overflowing uh, from the, the uh, storms that we've had recently is not a concern? I'm not familiar with any sewage overflow, but again... Yeah, you the drainage, maybe I'm using the wrong term, the drainage ditches, well, the, the drainage from all it, these other... It doesn't have anything to do with the, the, the wastewater. Okay, so that's not going to be a problem as far as all these subdivisions going in. These yeah. have to meet, and again, I know it, you, you, you get upset when I mention the 100-year flood, but they're going to have to meet the current requirements, which are uh, set to the 100-year flood standard. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I recommend approval of the objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number two, we're recommending the construction plans for the aforementioned Holly Hills. Okay, and those are ready to go? No punch list? This is just a development or construction okay. plans are not right. ready for that, that process. Right. I recommend approval without objection. Here not passes. And finally, item number three is we recommend the final plat for Bond View Unit 2, a 48 lot subdivision located in District 1, and it has met all of those punch list items and is ready for recording. I'm sorry you faded at the end. I couldn't understand. There, and it's ready to be recorded. We're ready to go. All right. I recommend approval without objection. Hearing none, it passes. And that concludes the engineer's report. Thanks, sir. Public Services Committee, uh, Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is recommend modification to Florida Division of Emergency Management 2014-15 Hazards Analysis Agreement and authorize execution of all relevant documents. And I do so without objection. Hearing none passes. Item two, recommend purchase of computer-related equipment 
in the amount of $17,985 from Dell Inc. for Emergency Communications Center based on comparison shopping by the IT department. And I do so without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item three recommends subordination of mortgage for ship first time home buyer loan for the property at 4319 Rice Road consistent with board policy. And I do so without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item four recommend amendment to the ship local housing assistance plan and the home annual action plan to include a reconstruction strategy and allocate $80,000 in home funds to that strategy as recommended by the SHIP Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. And I do so without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item five, recommend authorization for staff to grant currently approved plan unit development, a PUD, plan business development, PBD, and planned industrial development, PID projects one additional 12-month extension, after which time the site would either revert to its original zoning designation or must be resubmitted for renewal through the standard rezoning process. I move approval without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item six, recommend grant closeout agreement with the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for Neighborhood Stabilization Program, NSP, and authorize execution of relevant documents. And I do so without objection. Hearing none, it passes. And that concludes public services. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, public Works Committee, uh, Commissioner Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have three items today. I'd like to recommend proposal from Pensacola Concrete Construction Company, Inc., in the amount of $30,150.40 for installation of 160 linear feet of 18-inch liner and storm drain on Circle Drive based on comparison shopping with funding from road and bridge reserves. I'd like to move approval without objection. Number two, we'd like to recommend drainage easement from Curtis Green, from Curtis Green for property located at 6911 Delisa Road. I'd like to move approval without objection. Here, not passes. Number three, we'd like to recommend amendment of the Phase 1A traffic signal maintenance and compensation agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation. I'd like to move approval without objection. Here, not passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes Public Works Committee. Budget and Finance, uh, Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Items number one through number 25 are identical to that what was read on Monday. And with the board's approval, I'd like to move those 25 items without objection. Here and not pass. Yes, ma'am, come on forward. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East Milton. Number five, this is the one for the Holly Corp Hotel. Yes, ma'am. We're paying $142,000 for the hookup for that. This, ma'am, this, uh, this was prior delinquent uh, fees that in order to incentivize her, uh, the Holly Corp of going ahead and moving forward with construction of that hotel which we see would be much beneficial to the beach. Uh, we come negotiated that agreement. So we're paying that hookup fee and this includes delinquency fees. Is that my understanding? I mean, that's my understanding. Is that correct? Basically, uh, Ms. Cantu, during the time period that the hotel was totally destroyed, it was just gone. Right. They continued to pay us those tap fees even though they weren't using anything. They right. just paid them. And uh, then they, at some point, Castle had to re restart. And that is uh, just in consideration of the fact that they'd already invested several hundred thousand dollars with us for a service we didn't provide. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and we moved that without objection? Yes, yeah, sir. That, uh, yeah. We're still considering the one through 25 without objection. Yes, sir. And uh, hearing none, they're passed. Thank you. Item 26 is different than that on Monday, Ms. Bell. It was, was item number 26 that was on Monday struck from today? No, it wasn't struck. It's an add-on from last week. Okay, I read Monday. It was item number 2014-177. Uh, and I, okay, it's moved down it was, to It's out of sequence, now. that's all. Okay, all right. Okay, then we'll take it up at uh, number 26 is budget amendment 2015-148 in the amount of $15,500.
carrying forward economic development fund re reserve funds for Gulf Power Site Certification Program as approved at the April 24, 2014 meeting. I move that without objection. Your note passes. Item 27 is recommend budget amendment 2015-049 in the amount of $3,000 for Christmas in Navarre Park Lighting from District 4 Project Funds, and I move that without objection. Your note passes. Item 28 is recommend budget amendment 2014-177 in the amount of $2,576,403. Carrying forward transportation impact fee balances in the general fund, and I move that without objection. Here, not passes. And item 29 is recommend county, uh, county expenditure and check register for your approval, and I'll move that without objection. Here, not passes. Mr. Chairman, that concludes budget finance. Thank you, Commissioner Cole. Uh, Mr. Walker. Mr. Andrews, nothing? Nothing further. Public forum, anything to come before this board before we adjourn? See you none, hear none, we are adjourned.